It sounds like something from a bad horror film. A mutated weed growing out of control, and it keeps getting harder to kill. Except this time, it's real. Amaranthus palmeri, also known as Palmer Amaranth, is enemy number one on Ernest Morgan's farm in Mechanicsville, Maryland. Let's pull up another one here, Ernest, and see what we got. With University of Maryland Extension agent Ben Beal. Wow, yeah, it's getting some size to it. He's researching how to combat the aggressive plant. Left unchecked, this superweed can overtake entire fields, killing whatever the farmer planted. So as you can see, this particular cornfield has a, a large population of, of palmer amaranth in it. Obviously, it's interfering with corn growth in terms of competing for nutrients, competing for this year moisture. All the moisture that's in this plant is moisture that's not in that corn plant. The weed is ruthless, growing up to three inches a day and blocking out sunlight crops desperately need. And then Palmer amaranth is known for being a really big seed producer. So a plant this size, you know, can produce easily 200, 300,000 seeds. To make matters worse, it has developed resistance to common herbicides used in grain production. Ernest realized this five years ago when he sprayed his fields and all the weeds died, except for one type. After talking to other farmers about this surprise invader, they sent a sample to the University of Maryland, which confirmed it as Palmer amaranth. One of the really critical lessons that we learned is that we need to be able to identify Palmer amaranth quickly, you know, while we still only have 10 or 20 plants, and eliminate that from the farm before it goes to seed. Telltale signs include leaves growing in a rosette pattern, almost like a poinsettia. It also has petioles, or leaf stems, longer than the actual leaves as well as large seed heads, a smooth hairless stalk, and the occasional chevron watermark. So if you notice a field where you, you spray it with an herbicide that should kill those weeds and, and it didn't, it's a good clue that you need to really take a close look and see what you actually have out there. But where did this rapidly growing herbicide resistant super weed come from? Palmer amaranth is native to the Sonoran Desert region of the southwest United States, where ancient Native Americans used it as a food source. It's well adapted to hot, dry conditions, but grows and reproduces quickly after it rains. Centuries later, these same traits made it a nuisance for modern farmers and, with accidental human help, caused Palmer amaranth to spread around the country. Meanwhile, the 1990s saw the introduction of genetically modified crops with immunity to the herbicide glyphosate, known by the brand name Roundup. Now, farmers could spray a field and kill everything except the crop, significantly reducing the use of other herbicides. It was cheap, worked extremely well, got rid of almost every weed. The problem with that is using it over and over again and relying on only one chemistry you know, plants can adapt and Palmer amaranth adapted and that's how you get resistance. With separate male and female plants, Palmer amaranth has an uncanny ability to evolve resistance, not just to glyphosate, but to many herbicides if used improperly. See, if a farmer sprays a field and just a single male plant with an herbicide resistant mutation survives, it can pass those genes through its pollen to thousands of females, producing millions of herbicide-resistant seeds. And those extremely tiny seeds are spread easily by animals or farm equipment. The geese, the birds, the deer, they'll move the seed for you. So you gotta try to eliminate the seed. Then you can get a grip on what's left. You know, unfortunately, We've had instances where one farmer was actually helping out a neighbor farmer that couldn't get their crop in. Maybe their combine broke down or they were sick. They take their combine, you know, from their fields. Unknowingly, it had Palmer amaranth seeds on it, and they go to their neighbor's field and they spread Palmer amaranth. In light of all this, Palmer amaranth sounds unstoppable. But for the last five years, Ben and Ernest have been doing research in the field, literally on what herbicides do work on Palmer amaranth and how to best use them. So in this particular trial, what we're, we're looking at is 20 different 
treatments, which are a combination of pre-emergent herbicides, post-emergent herbicides, and then the control group has no treatment whatsoever so that we could get a comparison between the treatments as to what was most effective for palmer amaranth control. Pre-emergent herbicides prevent seeds from sprouting, and post-emergent herbicides kill them after they come up. The concentration and timing is critical. Otherwise, some palmer amaranth may survive, like this one that was damaged but not killed. But weed control extends beyond chemicals. Ben advises farmers to clean their machinery of all debris that could transport seeds and to plant crops in narrow rows so they form a canopy over any open ground. And so you can see these are narrower rows. These are 15-inch rows with full-season beans. And you can see that there's no sunlight getting down through that. We can pull this back. And you can see that that area in there is completely free of any, of any weeds. It's just, it's just soil and soybeans, which is, which is what we like. So the faster we can get that canopy formed, the better off we're going to be. The battle against Palmer amaranth and other herbicide-resistant weeds is far from over. But by learning from the past and integrating new practices, farmers are making a difference. Herbicides need to really be looked at as just another tool in the toolbox. They need to be used judiciously and sustainably, but they certainly make our farming practices more efficient, more effective. You know, that's why we have such a safe and affordable food supply today. The weed do put a toll on you. It's, it's hard, but you can make it. You can make it.